Hello again, art classes. It's Mr. K back out here in the garage, and we're going to do some art today where we're going to learn about an artist, special artist today this time, and we're going to kind of copy his style and make some artwork that looks a little bit like his. Now, I'm sure you've heard of him. You might not recognize the name. His name is Eric Carl, and he is an illustrator. He makes the pictures for books. Now, not only is he an illustrator, he's also the author. He also writes the same books that he makes the illustrations for, which most people don't always do. They usually, if you write your book, you hire somebody else to do the pictures for you. But he does it all himself. You've probably read his books before or seen them. The Very Hungry Caterpillar. Brown Bear, Brown Bear, What Do You See? A whole bunch of other books. So you've probably seen him before. We're going to copy some stuff that he does and put that into our artwork. Our standard for today is, I can explore different art materials. Our objective for the day, create a butterfly in the style of Eric Carle using a textured collage. So one of the things that Eric Carle is really well known for is using what we call a collage. So he takes all these different types of paper and pastes them down onto his artwork. That's what a collage is. But he isn't just grabbing the old piece of paper, he makes his own papers and decorates them with what we want to call a texture. Now texture is what the surface of something looks like or feels like. Maybe some things are very, very smooth. Probably the tabletop that you're going to work on is probably pretty smooth. Maybe something is very rough and bumpy. So it depends on what you're talking about, that what the texture is. So he uses textures in his work. And what we're going to do today is we're going to make some textures of our own. So. What you're going to need, you're going to need some paper, you're going to need some crayons, and you're going to need stuff to make a texture rubbing from. All right, so when I say paper this time, paper could be any kind of paper that you want. You could just get a plain old piece of white paper. You could get some construction paper, some a different color of copy paper. You can get some newspaper, anything you want. And here's what we're going to do with it. We're going to need your crayon. And you know, see how you got paper all over the crayon? I mean, it's how they come. It's kind of normal, right? But what we want to do, we don't want to draw with the tip like you're used to. What we're going to do is you're going to take that crayon and snap it off. Oh my gosh, he broke the crayon. I know, I know, but don't do it with all your crayons. You want to just do it with a couple. And we're going to peel the paper off of that. Oh, it's so much easier, usually. There we go. Find a way that might need a grown-up to help you out a little bit. Just kind of run your fingernail down there and make a little line down the middle. And then go ahead and peel that paper right off of there. Because what we're going to do is we need it to... We're going to use the side. We, we need it to be nice and blank so that we can hold it like this and rub with the side of it. Let me show you how that works. So usually we'll draw with a crayon like this. We don't want a line today. What we want to do is we want to lay it down flat and pinch it and go ahead and rub it all the way across. Now that looks pretty cool. That's okay. Nothing wrong with that. But what we're going to do is we're going to find some stuff to put underneath of our paper so that we can rub on top of it and it's going to give it some texture and it'll look a little bit like this. So when I'm doing this in a classroom with students, I bring in what I call these texture plates. I have these that I bought and they have, I don't know if you can see it on there, see how they're raised up? You can see the kind of, it makes it kind of bumpy. I made some. People drew all over these, but you can tell that there's a leaf there. I glued, I actually painted a piece of cardboard, put a leaf on top of it, and then painted right over the top of the leaf. And what ends up happening is, if I put these underneath, this one looks like some flowers. If I put my flowers underneath of the paper, and I rub on top of it with my crayon, oh my gosh, it's like magic. You get to see exactly what was underneath. Now, if you have something like this at home and you want to go ahead and use these, that's great. Go for it. That's totally fine. 
but we have a little bit of an advantage right now because you're at home. You don't have to just use something like this that I would give you in class. You've got your entire house or apartment or wherever you live and you've got sidewalks and there's plants outside. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go outside and get a little creative and see what I can go find outside to make some rubbings with. All right, I'm running around outside here seeing what I can find. Uh, let's see here. Ooh, how about some plants? All right, I found some plants outside here. So let's see, I got some paper, I got a book, I got a crayon. I don't even have to take these leaves off the plant. I can put them right there. I'm gonna put this book behind a few of the leaves. I don't know if you can see that, there you go. I'm gonna put my paper on top of it. I'm gonna take my crayon, I'm gonna rub right over the top of that. You can move it around a little bit, you can get a different view of the leaves. You could use more than one color of crayon. But there's a special way to do this with this crayon that I'm going to show you in a little bit. So if you want to do some of them with just one color on a piece of white paper, that would be cool. This one's looking pretty good. Some of these will work better than others. That's pretty good. Now I don't want to get it totally covered with crayon. I want to get all these edges because we're going to use every little bit of it. But I don't need too much crayon on there. I don't need it too thick, because I want to be able to see some paper. Otherwise, you won't see any texture. So I'm going to get the whole thing. And let's go see what else we can get some textures from. We can get some bricks. How about a wood fence? Don't color on your wood fence, though. You get in trouble. You can even do the lines and the cracks on the sidewalk. All right, let's see what we got here. We got our papers, put our crayons away, and let's check out and see what we came up with. All right, so we've got some papers here. Did some of them inside with those texture boards, did some outside on some leaves and some bricks, and some of them, this one didn't turn out that great. I'm not gonna, I could, you know what, I could use it for some of the small parts. You'll see what I'm talking about in a little bit. I'll set that aside. This one's pretty good, I kinda like that one. Um, this one's all right, I like that one a whole lot. So, let's see here. What we're gonna need is one really big one that is all covered all the way around because that's going to be the wings for our butterfly. So I think I'm going to use, I like this one from outside. I'm going to use this. Now, if you did it on construction paper, you could even use two colors of crayon. You could do two different patterns on there to rub. That's cool. If you used construction paper, you're done. You're ready for the next step. But if you have some plain, paper, plain white paper that you want to make colorful, we're gonna do one more step that's gonna require a few other uh, materials. Let me show you how that one works. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we can do what's called a wax resist painting, where if you have some watercolors and some water and a paintbrush, all you need to do is dip this in, figure out which color you'd like, and cover the whole thing with whatever color you want. Now. If you have watercolors at home, let me switch over to this one. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me try this with just plain watercolors. I'll show you how to do this if you don't have watercolors. I'm gonna go for a nice yellow on top of my purple. Don't wanna try using the same color. Like I don't want a purple on a purple, that won't show up as nicely. And since I'm just using plain old copy paper, you don't want to go over it a whole bunch of times. You want to just go over it lightly one time and be done. Don't try to paint over and over and over and over because a lot of times in class people will you know, do this thing where they just go over it and over and over it and it weakens the paper and it's going to fall apart completely. So I'm just going to go over this, get it nice and yellow. If you get too much paint, it's going to cover up your 
your crayon and it won't show through. Wherever there's crayon, the paint won't stick. And wherever there's paper, it's gonna turn yellow or whatever color you're using. Cool, so I can use part of this for my parts of the butterfly or to decorate my butterfly. You'll see what I mean by that in a moment. Now, if we don't have, if you don't have any watercolors at home, you can do something else. I showed this in another video, if you may have seen it. If you didn't though, you can use food coloring. Now, food coloring is like super, super powerful, super, super like bright and, and you know, heavy duty. Let's see here, what color do I want to use on top? I'm not going to use red on top of red, because that's going to be too much red. And I just use yellow on the other one. I'm going to go with green. Green and red are opposite colors. So all I need is one drop. One drop is all I need. And I'm going to water that down a little bit. So I'll clean out my brush a little bit. If you don't have a brush, you could use a paper towel. You could just pour a teeny, teeny, tiny bit of water. Look at that. Now that's still really, really, really bright. I could even bring that over into here and water that down a little bit. There we go. And test it out. See what, see how it works. I'll do it with a paper towel just to show you how it works. You could use a Kleenex, you could use a paper towel. I'm just gonna fold this up, dip it in here. Oh yeah, we need a little more than that. There we go. All right, now we're talking. I don't have to rub hard. I just need to cover it. I'm just going very, 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 very gently. Don't be afraid to get the whole thing with green. Yeah, your finger's gonna turn a little green. That's okay, it comes right off. Two, three years, it'll be gone. I'm totally kidding. So, go ahead and cover that whole thing. And this is the really super exciting part. Now you get to let it dry until you can use it. Mm, yeah, I know. Well. So now we just gotta let that sit. Once this is dry, we can start making our butterflies. All right, so I did a whole bunch of papers. I've got some with yellow, I've got some with green, I've got some with blue, I've got these construction papers. I even got the weather section of the newspaper and painted all over it with some watercolors. So there's all sorts of different textures going on. There's things that look man-made like bricks. There's things that look like plants, like, well, Plants, they are actual plants. This one's the one that I put the book behind the, the leaves from the plant that I left the leaves right on the plant and then put the paper over the top. That's what this one is. I'm gonna use this for my main butterfly wings. Now, I like this one a lot, but it doesn't go all the way to the edge. I'm not gonna be able to get my wings big enough. Let me show you what I mean. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold these in half this way. Now, usually in class, I have some templates and I have people trace things, but I don't have, well, I have them here. That's kind of the problem. You don't have them there. So you can, if you draw on the back of this, that way, if you don't like what you draw, you can erase it, you can do it over and you won't mess up the other side. It will leave it blank. No one will see what's happening here. You can draw on this with a pencil or a crayon or whatever you think. I'm gonna go ahead and use a pen so you can see it nicely. And what we wanna do is we're gonna leave this middle, we're gonna leave it right there. You ever seen where you like fold the paper and you make a, you cut a heart shape? You just cut half the heart and then you open it up and it's a whole heart. We're gonna do the same type of thing here, except instead of it being, we can just do the top going up like this, like we're making a heart. But then we're gonna make it almost like, like a, like a, almost a letter B or a number eight. And it's gonna end here. That way, we're gonna make a nice big butterfly wing. If you wanna make it even bigger, I could have gone out here more. Yeah, I think I will, actually. I don't have to worry. No one's gonna see this side. This side's gonna get glued down. So if you don't like what you did over here, that's okay. There, I'm gonna cut on that outside line. Yeah, I'm even gonna, I'll show you what, when I cut this, 
I'm gonna edit it just a little bit. Let me get my scissors out. I don't have to keep it facing the same way. I could move the paper around. It makes my life easier. Now, I might be cutting along here and think, you know what? I want to change this a little bit. I'm going to make it kind of come to a point in the middle instead. Maybe you drew it that way. Maybe you don't want to do it that way. It's up to you. This is just an idea. This is an example. You do not have to copy every single thing that I'm doing on this. Okay? So... Now, you can almost see that marker through here. You probably want to use crayon or pencil on this. Now I have a butterfly. And I can use all these other, you know, if I forgot one butterfly here, why, what's with all the other papers? Well, on those, you know, I really like this one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make that the middle. You know, I'm going to cut this down a little further. I kind of like having it come to more of a, a smaller spot in the middle. I'm gonna trim a little bit extra off of this. And, oh, now, ooh, look at that. That's cool. I'm gonna save that. I might need this for something later. I'll show you what I mean. Ooh, antenna. Little antenna off the top of the head. That'd be kind of cool. So, oh, there we go. I like the big part on top. I don't know if you don't have to. That's just me. Now on this part, I can go ahead and draw the body of the butterfly. It's kind of like a squished football. Uh, let's, let's get some nice shapes in here. So it's like a, yeah, like I say, a squished football. I'm just gonna cut that out. If I see a little bit of that black line, that's okay. It gives it some extra texture. Now, I'm going to have a lot of scraps for this. I've already got these two scraps. I've got all this extra yellow that I didn't need. Let me just cut this off. Guess what? You're going to keep all of that. Now, one nice thing about being at home, usually when you're in the classroom and we're doing this, you've got 50 minutes and you got to be done and get out of that room and i got to move to the next class. we got to hurry and you can do one butterfly. Well... You can do as many butterflies as you want with this. Now we can start decorating them a little bit. So now we can start decorating them a bit. We're gonna get out a glue stick and I'm gonna glue the back of this on here. And usually in class, I glue these onto a great big black piece of paper, but you, if you want to do that and have a black background for your butterfly, that's cool. You could just have it like this too, and that's totally fine. Our butterfly needs a head, so I'm gonna I'm gonna use this newspaper. I'm gonna cut out. Uh, I'm gonna cut out a red one. That'll be kind of interesting with these numbers. I'm just gonna cut a round head. Oops. You know what? I'm gonna cut that all off and then make my round head on here because it'll be easier. I'm not even moving my scissors. I'm holding them in one spot and just slowly closing them and turning the paper. And guess what? If you want to try this a few times at home until you get it right, huh, that's kind of cool. Somebody's face on the back there. So I can glue this on. I've got a head for my butterfly. It's a little big for the head, don't you think? I'm going to trim that down. Make it a little smaller. The words don't have to face the right way. That's totally fine. Now I've got all this space on the wing and I've got all these other papers. So I can start cutting some shapes. Maybe I cut some, let's cut a big strip off of here. And I can cut some triangles. Cut a few of them. Glue some over here. Glue some over here. Get the whole back side. It's that glue that dries clear when it's dry. 
purple when it's wet. These two look better. I'll put some down at the bottom and I can use all these papers and decorate the whole thing as much as I want. I could make more than one. This is the glorious part about being at home. You've got whatever you've got at home, get creative, put all sorts of stuff on there. I even figured out that we could grab some, I can't do this at, at school usually, but we can start looking for some, ooh, look at that. Get old. This is in the two year old magazine. If you are going to do this at home with magazines, please get permission from the grownups in your house before you start cutting everything up. I can just turn this into some visual texture. Even if it's food you don't like. Does it have to be a food magazine? No, it could be anything. A little stripe out of that. And I'm just gonna go ahead and play around with this and see what I can come up with. over here that's okay this is a good thing I, look at all the scraps I still have I've made four butterflies and I've got enough I've got that magazine and I had like four or five papers oh my gosh I could make like 20 more of these things but I'm gonna leave it here and I'm gonna show you what you could do with these to display them so a really great way to display these at your house is you put them in a window. So all you have to do is take a little bit of scotch tape and put some on the back of your butterfly wing. Here's the front, here's the back, so that the sticky part is facing the front of the butterfly. And go on the inside of the window and put them so that they're sticking out so that people on the street or something can see it and you'll brighten up somebody else's day too. So that's it for today's lesson. Go ahead, test things out, try things. Everything in here is just a suggestion. However you want to go about doing it. If you want to use watercolors, go for it. If you want to use chalk, if that's what you have, test it out. Try something. Come up with something new. Don't feel like it has to look exactly like mine. I think yours could probably be even better than mine. Trust me. So enjoy. Try it out test it out, experiment. It's kind of like science. And see what you can come up with. Have fun, and I'll see you next time. Take care.